Wow. All right, so, ladies and gents, it's now time for the review. I know you guys are pumped for this. You guys have been loving my live reviews recently. I'm sure you're super excited for this, right? <laughs> All right. All right. Let me get set up here. In fact, I wonder if the camera's ready. I don't know if it is. Nope, I gotta... Okay, it's almost ready. Of course, I gotta go... You know what? I'm gonna brush my hair before I do this, but let's get the camera ready here quick. <clears throat> let's get the camera to the right resolution, at least. At the least. There we go, and I gotta zoom it out. There we are. But as you can see, my hair's completely screwed up from the headphones, so... Alright, I'm gonna go brush my hair quickly, and then we're gonna actually, uh... We're actually going to do the uh, the live review, okay? By the way, Mackenzie just cheered. He said, end of the credit says, Extinction will return. <laughs> yes. Extinction will return. Of course it will. <clears throat> okay. Um, Let me go brush my hair and then we'll do this, all right? I'll be right back. All right, you guys ready for this? <laughs> I know you guys are. Holy crap. All right, real quick, guys. Live review coming right now. FYI, obviously I can't do shout-outs during a live review, but if you guys do cheer, sub, and tip during the review, I will give you a shout-out after the review is over, okay? Uh, in fact, shout-out to Legend Fated right now, who just cheered and said, excuse me while I go play Super Mario Land for the Game Boy. Super Mario Land... With a Game Boy. Very nice. Okay. <clears throat> we ready? Alright, here we go, guys. <clears throat> Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Side Phil here, and welcome to another live review. I'm actually doing this review immediately after completing another game that I just finished on stream. This time around, the name of the game is Extinction from Iron Galaxy. And you may say, that name kind of sounds familiar. Yeah, they're the, the same studio who was involved with games like Killer Instinct and the like in the last uh, several years. So, Extinction, full disclosure, I received a review copy of the game. Just want to let you guys know that up front. I didn't actually buy the game, but this game is priced at $60. Full retail price. What is Extinction? Well, Extinction is a game that combines many different kinds of genres and ideas from other video games and pop culture. Think the world design and graphical style of World of Warcraft, okay, with the plotline of Attack on Titan, giant orcs, much like the Titans in that, 
that franchise are attacking humanity and destroying their towns and citizens and basically trying to end humanity, okay? You are a sentinel, a person who is tasked with trying to take down these orc armies and stop them from destroying humanity in this game. Uh, much like Attack on Titan, there was the, the renegade squad who was trying to fight the giant titans, right? Um, combine that with the gameplay of a game, say, like Shadow of the Colossus, and or Monster Hunter. You're uh, trying to find a way to scale ginormous enemies and find their weak points, hack at these weak points to kill them, take them down, okay? Um, on the base level, wow, that sounds like it could probably be pretty interesting, right? I mean, you, three different elements, you know, graphics of one universe and plot line of another with, with gameplay of another. It just kind of, maybe it'll come together to be a coherent whole. Um, Extinction is not necessarily a horrendously bad or non-functional game. Okay, um, however, Extinction, sadly, falls far short of what anyone in 2018 should be expecting to get for a full $60 retail price tag, okay? What is Extinction? What kind of gameplay is there? Well, there is a campaign comprised of seven chapters. Each chapter is roughly comprised of anywhere from five to seven separate levels. So it's around between 30 to 45 or so individual levels. What will you be doing in said levels? Well, there's a few things you'll be doing. Number one, rescuing civilians. Throughout these open world maps in Extinction, there are civilians who need to be rescued from the incoming hordes of enemies. And they're all just standing near these kind of crystal pylons going like this, completely just defenseless. It's your job to try to evacuate them by fighting enemies around them and stopping them from being attacked and then holding down a button to have them summoned away, okay? That's one kind of gameplay in the game. Then there's the standard mini enemies called jackals. There's different kinds of jackals that you'll fight during the course of the game, including a little one that just looks like a standard green orc. You hit him a couple times, he dies. There is a more powerful version that throws projectiles, a little bit more health. Hit him a few times, he'll die. Then there's a super powered one that's big and red these are really powerful and they'll hit you with super armor you try to hit them they're going to punch right through your attacks so you got to be a little bit more you know wary of how to fight them dodge around a little bit you know kind of stick and move stick and move and then there's the vultures which are flying enemies enemies that have wings they're pretty weak you only hit them a few times they'll die but they can be annoying because they attack from the air four types of standard enemies that's it there's nothing else in the game standard enemies besides these guys now how do you kill them? Well, there's two kinds of attacks in the game. There's either combos, which you mash a, an attack button to do different combos. You can either just mash it repeatedly to get like a four or five hit combo. If you hold down the button, you'll do a launcher, which can then lead to an aerial juggle. Or if you stagger your button inputs, you'll do different attacks. So for example, he'll do a slash and then a big wide slash that maybe hit like a several enemies that are around you. And if you delay the button inputs, you'll find you'll get better combos. However, in the course of playing Extinction, you're going to find that button is literally worthless. That mash the button combo button is worthless. Because the best attack in the game is the charge attack, which you do by holding down left trigger, targeting an enemy, and then releasing. The charge attack is incredibly powerful. It will kill the regular uh, jackal with one hit. Now, the regular jackal, in comparison, needs eight hits of the mashing button in order to kill it. So it's like mash, 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 mash. Oh, it's finally dead. Or charge, release, dead. So obviously you're always going to use the charge attack no matter what. Um, the mid-level enemy takes three hits, the bigger level enemy takes four hits, and those flying enemies only take one hit. So literally, there's a button in the game that's completely worthless. The one thing you would use it against, the little enemies, the jackals, you never use it. Just use the charge attack, you'll kill them more quickly. It's a completely ineffective strategy. So it almost seems like they had an idea for what they wanted to do with the melee combat, and then they just abandoned it completely and made this charge attack the best move in the game. Okay? So that's number two. That's the second thing that you're going to be doing, fighting these little jackals. The third thing you're going to be doing in the game is fighting giant orcs called Raveny, okay? This is the primary focus of the game, and if you saw a trailer for Extinction, it's probably what you figured the entire game was. Ginormous monsters that are trying to destroy the human uh, towns. So how do you stop them? Well, the whole idea is to try to hack off their armor and limbs to stun them so they can't move, then get up on their, their shoulders and chop their necks so their heads are, are come off, they're beheaded, and then you kill them, okay? Now, there's variations of these Raveny in the game. Some of them will have no armor at all, in which case you could just use that charge attack to target their various limbs, chop them off, they'll get stunned, you know, chop off two legs, he falls on his ass, can't move, maybe try to swatch you, chop off his arms, now he's got nothing, he's got four nubs, climb up his neck, and chop them at the head. Now, you can't behead a Raveny until your rage meter is completely filled. How do you fill the rage meter? 
rescuing civilians, killing jackals, gee, what a coincidence, the other two things in this game are what charge the rage meter, or destroying pieces of armor, which is what I'm going to talk about next. Armor. There's different kinds of armor in the game. Wooden armor, which just requires one shard slash and the armor will be destroyed. Then you can get at the limb and hack it off. Metal armor, which has different ways to deactivate it. Sometimes there's locks that you have to specifically target with your charge attack and then release. Talk out the locks. Now the armor will come off. Then you can attack the limb. There's specialized armor. For example, there's golden armor that requires multiple locks, okay? There's skulls, flaming skulls. You can't damage flaming skulls. What you need to do is get the enemy to attack with that limb. So, for example, if you're near an enemy who has flaming skull armor on its legs, get it to try to stomp you. It accidentally puts out its own fire. Then you can destroy the skull, which destroys the armor. Then you can chop off that limb and ground that opponent and get at that limb. Um... There's also variations, like for example, there's wooden armor with spikes on it. It's the same as regular wooden armor, only it requires additional hits and more precise aiming. You can't just climb wooden armor, you'll get spiked or whatever. Um, and that's really about it. There's The only other kind of armor that I can think of is, um, there's one kind of armor that you cannot destroy at all. So what you need to do, instead of like chopping off their legs and climbing up their backs, sometimes these giant raveny will have like little pouches on their belts. So you have a grappling hook that you can throw up quickly and zip line up to their back. That's the one variation with the with the leg armor. And then at the end of the game, there's spike armor. Spike armor is completely impervious. You can't damage it at all. What you need to do is try to convince the enemy to attack itself. So climb up on its shoulders near its spike pads and spike helmet, and it'll try to swat at you and hit itself. After it does that two or three times, now the armor is weakened, and now you can destroy it yourself with your charge attack, and then you can get at it. So... Killing jackals, saving citizens, and destroying pieces of armor on these giant raveny orcs charges up your rage meter. Once your rage meter's charged, now you climb up, you make sure there's no helmet on the head of the guy. If there is, you destroy it. You aim for the neck, zoop, you kill the raveny, game over. All right? So, literally, that's the three things you do in Extinction. Save citizens, fight the jackals, which are the standard small enemies, or kill the giant raveny, which are the big enemies. The one exception to the rule is that there's another mission type during the campaign called Tower Defense, where you need to protect these certain towers that are located within your city, okay? You usually have a time limit that you have to defend them. Five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes. I think by the end of the game, it's upwards of nine minutes, okay? You may think, oh, that's easy. Just kill everything, right? Well, no, because the enemies will infinitely respawn. Now, the good news is only the giant Raveny can damage the towers, the bad news is, the game literally cheats. So you'll go to fight one Raveny, you'll be fighting it. Oh, spawn another Raveny on the other side of the map that's right near the towers, and it starts attacking them and knocking them down immediately. And you realize, how is that fair? So the, the only way for you to really be successful in these stages is to bait the Raveny to try to get close to each other and then just repeatedly chop their feet. Never actually kill the Raveny, because if you do, they respawn. So what you need to do is just chop off one foot, chop off the other foot. So he's stunned for a while, okay? Run over to the other guy, chop off one foot, chop off the other foot, run back to the first guy. One thing I forgot to mention, if you don't quickly kill the Raveny, they will regenerate their limbs. So, for example, in this case with the tower defense, if you're not fast enough, the, the, that Raveny will regenerate his feet, get up, and I'll start moving towards the towers again. So, literally, to beat the tower defense stages, you're just chopping off feet in an endless loop, running back and forth between two giant orcs, chopping off feet for upwards of 10 minutes. To make matters even worse, like, that's not boring, right? Obviously, it sounds pretty boring. Every time you use that charge attack with the trigger, all right, that also freezes time. So even though a certain stage might say, survive for 8 minutes, it might take you 12 to 15 minutes, because if you keep using the charge attack, you freeze time every time you use it, so it becomes incredibly tedious and annoying. Um, so, after you complete a stage, all right, you earn experience points, and these experience points are used to buy various upgrades for your characters. In addition, every stage will have additional requirements to earn you bonus experience points so for example maybe a stage is just rescue overall 20 civilians that's all you have to do but there may be a bonus objective kill 15 jackals behead two raveny so instead of just doing the base objective to get through the stage you want to actually try to do those extra objectives to earn as many experience points as you can because you want to level up your character after the, the quest is over all right so variations on upgrades for example you could have more health okay you can have um, better jumping abilities. You can have the ability to recover in midair. You can have the ability to widen your radar, and boy, do I recommend that one, because the, the radar in this game is very small. So if you're trying to save civilians, a lot of the times you can't even see them. You don't know where they are because the mini-map is so small, and there's no full map of any stage in the game. 
So without increased radar, you never know where you even go on the map. It becomes incredibly frustrating. There's the ability to rescue civilians faster. This is very important to beat the game because it takes a long time to rescue civilians by default. But if you keep putting money into that upgrade, by the end, you'll be rescuing civilians super quick. In fact, by the end of the game, I had a group of civilians around those crystal pylons I mentioned who were getting attacked. I didn't even bother fighting the little enemies anymore. I would just rescue them because they would be rescued before the enemies ever killed any of them. So there you go. Um, and there's also various things, like, for example, always have 20% of your rage meter filled by default no matter what. Wow, that's huge, because that means you're already a fifth of the way to being able to behead, behead one of the Raveni at any time, okay? Now, damage in the game. The little guys, the jackals, will barely ever hurt you. It's really rare if you're going to get killed by one of these guys. You're going to be using the charge attack to attack them. You've got a dodge button to dodge out of the way. They're pretty much pushovers. But the Raveni... They will almost always insta-kill you no matter what. They've got big sweeping attacks with their arms that are fast and almost impossible to get out of the way of. Some Raveni have weapons like giant clubs that just double their range. When they stomp, it's an area of effect attack that damages you and stuns you. So the Raveni honestly are pretty annoying when it comes to fighting them because sometimes you'll be, I took off one foot, took off the other foot, trying to scale. Oh, he swatted his back. I was on the other side of his shoulder, but somehow area of effect damage killed me. Now, the good news is there's literally zero penalties to dying in extinction. That's right. There's no extra lives. You don't have to start the level over. There's zero penalty. All that happens is you respawn somewhere else on the map and have to run back to whatever you were doing when you died and then just continue on with the game. Um, pretty silly, right? But I think the reason they did that is they realized if there was a penalty, the game would be too hard. Um, since there's no penalty, a lot of the times you could just rush back to the objective and try to do whatever you were trying to do, like kill that Raveni or stop the Raveni from de destroying the towers, etc. Uh, the only time I ever felt found dying annoying is during the tower defense missions, okay? When I'm trying to prevent the Raveni from destroying the towers... I need to keep them away, and if I die and I respawn somewhere else, now i got to run across the entirety of the map to try to get back to that Raveni, and it takes so long, sometimes another tower has fallen, or two towers have fallen, and I fail the mission. And in fact, out of all the, the missions in the entire campaign of the game, which roughly... The campaign of the game will, will last you six to seven hours tops. If you fail a lot, if you do good, you'll probably only be like five hours. The only stages I found difficult were the tower defense stages. Those were the ones where I sometimes I couldn't get the Raveni close enough where I could run back and forth and keep chopping off their limbs. Or I would kill one and then another one would respawn right next to the tower and then boom, 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 take out all the towers. Uh, outside of those, the civilian missions, saving civilians, are dirt easy. And no lie, I usually beat those stages in about two to three minutes. That's ridiculous. A whole stage of the game being in two to three minutes because all you need to do is run and save them. And like I said, once you get those rescue speed upgrades for your character, you can beat it so quickly, it's, it's just laughable, okay? The stages to kill Raveni, like kill four Raveni, kill six Raveni, those are kind of fun because some of the Raveni will have variety in the armor and stuff that they're wearing. Okay, this one's easy. I can just chop his leg, just climb him, get him to swap the skull on his own head, chop the skull, behead him, he's done. Or you maybe have more complex ones. Man, this guy's got spike armor, so I gotta try to lure him to hit himself and stuff like that. So it becomes more interesting when you have to actually execute the Raveni. But the tower defense stages are unfucking bearable There's at least five to six of them in the game, and they really hold up the game. They take upwards of 10 to 15 minutes per mission. If you fail, you gotta start completely from the beginning. Which brings me to a point I should definitely bring up. Ladies and gentlemen, at least on the PlayStation 4, Extinction is a very unstable game. Four times during the course of me playing this game, so six hours of gameplay, four times, that's almost once every hour and a half, the game crashed. The problem is there's no checkpoints in Extinction. So if you start a, 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 a chapter or you start a level, it's a tower defense level. Wow! All right, I'm down to the last minute after eight minutes of grinding. And as I told you, it's actually more than that because every time you use the charge attack, it, st it stalls time. You've been playing for 15 minutes. I'm about to win. I'm about to win. Game crashes. Start over from the beginning. Kill six Ravity. I killed five. I'm on the shoulders of the sixth one. Here we go. The killing blow. Game crashes. Start over from the beginning. And that happened four times during the course of me playing the campaign of the game. Okay? Story and cutscenes. Well, folks, I hate to say it, the story is incredibly bare bones. There is one, and it is fully voice acted, but most of the story is fleshed out during just still frame images of the characters with text reading underneath it as the dialogue is read out loud. There's no actual animated 
cutscenes to 95% of the story of the game. There are six different animated cutscenes. I take that back. I think there's actually seven because there's an intro and a finale. So there's probably seven or eight animated cutscenes that are very, very bare bones like animation. I think it looks like Legend of Korra, only like ultimate budget Legend of Korra. Like I had one tenth of the budget of Legend of Korra and I made a couple animated cutscenes. That's what they look like. Um, so like six to seven animated cutscenes that last one to two minutes each, plus a bunch of voice acting narration. The story is very bare bones. It's not very robust. It's not very riveting. It's pretty much just in there for a reason to be in there. Okay. So the story pretty much terrible, non-existent almost. And really it's not riveting at all to keep you playing the game. So then maybe the gameplay will keep you playing the game, right? Well, as I just mentioned to you guys, there's four kinds of missions. Kill Raveny, Tower Defense, Rescue Citizens and um, kill jackals. That's it. That's all of the gameplay of Extinction. Once you've played the game for roughly about an hour to an hour and a half, you've seen everything except some of the variations of the higher level armor that'll be on Ravity near the end of the game. But outside of that, you've seen everything the game will have. In addition, and I have not seen this in a games campaign in a long time. Ladies and gentlemen, Extinction has randomly generated stages in the campaign. What do I mean by that? I mean the objectives, the side objectives, the stage are randomly generated. It'll actually run an RNG, pro, uh, you know, thing. Oh, this is going to be a kill six Raveny stage. Your bonus objective is rescue civilians. The stage is the town. It does it randomly. It's so stupid. So every time you play a stage in Extinction, you could get a completely different experience. One person could play a stage and get all Raveny who have, by the way, the Raveny are randomly generated and so is their armor. So, oh, okay, it's a tower defense stage, but all the Raveny have no armor on them, so I can easily just chop off their limbs. I beat the stage easily. Someone else goes to play it and the guy has middle armor you can't break and the hardest level armor. What the hell? How is that fair, right? It's not. Some people might have the easiest side objectives. Other people have the hardest side objectives. Sometimes you'll get a map that's easier. Sometimes you'll get a map that's harder. Randomly generated campaigns, I mean, they couldn't even take the time to say, oh, I'm going to design each stage intricately for the campaign, which is the meat of the game. No, literally, it's a RNG game. So that being said, um, it's pretty pathetic. I mean, just being real with you guys, it's pathetic. It's a game that <clears throat> if this game were being sold for maybe 20 bucks, okay, $20, the third of a price of a regular standard retail game, um, okay, the story's terrible and there's very little animation in the cutscenes, there's no multiplayer, there's just this single player campaign and it's randomly generated, but the gameplay mechanics are functional, alright, alright, give it the benefit of the doubt, $20 game. They're selling this for $60, ladies and gentlemen. Now, to be fair, there's slightly more content than what I've described here with the campaign. There's also time trials. So each level of the campaign, you could time yourself to beat it within a certain amount of time and you get additional experience points to level up your character more if you complete those trials. Then there's a couple other modes of daily challenge mode where each day there's a new challenge for you to complete and you can rank yourself against your friends who own the game if you happen to have the bad luck of anyone else actually bought this game. There's also... Dale Extinction Mode, which is basically a survival mode. You fight endlessly against endless waves of respawning enemies and see how long you can survive. And I believe there's one other challenge-style mode like that as well. So, there are other modes, but they're all single-player, and it's all the same exact gameplay that you experienced in the campaign with no variation whatsoever, no new enemies, nothing. It's the same crap regurgitated over and over and over, and basically, it's completely worthless. Once you've beaten the campaign of Extinction, you'll have no desire to ever go back, You'll have no reason to go back. You'll never want to play those additional modes. And since there's no multiplayer, it's just, uh, it's kind of like a quick fart that rockets out of your ass and you forget about it, right? You left it behind you. Um, sadly, that's really the best description for Extinction. It's a quick fart. And then you're done with it and you can walk away from that stink that was left behind and pretend like it never happened. Um, it's sad because honestly, I think that if there was more variation into enemies, more kinds of missions, and co-op, Boy, does this game scream a co-op game. If two or three people were co-oping against these giant ravens, you take out the foot, I'll climb up on his head and take out his helmet. Boom. Or you're on a tower defense stage. Well, now it doesn't matter if a Raveny spawned on the other side of the map already attacking the towers. Your teammate can go handle that and you handle the Raveny that's right in front of you. And you take it on in a team-based setting. 
that would have been outstanding. In fact, I almost have to think that's kind of maybe what they wanted to do, but for whatever reason, they couldn't do it budget-wise or skill-wise of the developers or whatever. It just seems to me like that is exactly what how this game could have shined, but they just didn't bother with it. They just put in this really crappy, randomly generated campaign with only four kinds of missions, uh, only three kinds of different objectives. It's just really bad. And even worse is the fact that the game crashes on PS4. So not only is the game short, no multiplayer, no replayability, you're going to have to replay stages from the start if your PS4 crashes while you're playing it. Oh my god. But by far, guys, by far, the worst offense that Extinction can offer is that it's a full $60 price tag. That in 2018, any game developer would think that a game that you could beat within 5 to 6 hours... No replayability, no multiplayer, no co-op is worth $60. I mean, they knew they were releasing a fart. They knew it. They knew they were releasing a, a stinker. They knew this game was not worth 60 bucks, And they tried to hide that fact behind nice trailers and things like that. And pretend like the game was good. This by far, ladies and gentlemen, is the biggest ripoff of 2018. There's no way you can justify the amount of content that's in Extinction as being worth 60 bucks. In fact, I will go as far to say this. There was another game this year that I reviewed just like this that I said was a huge ripoff and definitely you shouldn't check it out. The name of the game was Sea of Thieves, all right? Sea of Thieves is a game that there's only three kinds of missions. It's a very shallow world. There's not a lot of people inside of the world to interact with. And, you know, but, but, a big but in Sea of Thieves... There's multiplayer, there's co-op, okay? So, being able to play against people or cooperating with people, at least in the case of Sea of Thieves, offers up a social aspect that would make you want to at least play through the game for a while. None of that exists in Extinction. Extinction is literally single player only, play this very shallow amount of content, but pay us full retail price for it. That is the worst kind of game because it basically says that these game developers are ripping you off knowingly knowing there are tons of games out there you'll get more out of, but they're still trying to charge you full price and fool you into thinking it's just as good as all those other $60 games. Bullshit. I, in my review score right now, which I'm about to tell you, I'm going to grade this game directly off of the value you get. So, ladies and gentlemen, for $60, this game's a complete fucking ripoff, all right? In reality, for $20, if I had paid 20 bucks to play Extinction, okay, five to six hours of content with some challenges, no multiplayer, but it's only 20 bucks. Okay, that makes sense. So, I have to take a full review score of 10, which I would have given to a perfect game, Okay, and I have to say they're charging $60. This game is only worth $20. $20 is one third of 60. Therefore, to even start rating this game, I have to rate it equivalent to that. So 100 points for $60. What's 20? 3.33. So my review score for Extinction starts as a 3.33 out of 10. Now I've got to rate it as the fact that the game crashed repeatedly on my PS4. So let's subtract a half a point, right? <laughs> okay, the game is too shallow. The game's way too repetitive. There's RNG. Let's deduct some points, okay? Ultimately, when you look at it, is Extinction a functional game? Yes. Is Extinction a fun game? No. It's too repetitive. It's too shallow. It's not good. It's way overpriced. It's a slap in the face of modern consumers. I rate Extinction 2 out of 10. 2 out of 10. It's a stinky fart that you hope you can pass real quick and then scuttle away from it and just whew, leave it in your past and pretend like maybe 